Folks, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, welcome. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about the process that patients typically go to from their initial consultation with a weight loss surgeon up to the day of surgery. Uh, this is something that does vary in, you know, from degrees in terms of who your policyholder is, if you're going through insurance, and, um, and some surgeons vary from one plan to another. So today I'm just going to kind of give you some general ideas and guidelines as to what typically happens from your initial consultation with your surgeon up till the day of surgery, uh, just to kind of let you guys know what you might expect. So at your initial consultation, generally you would talk to your surgeon about which operations might be right for you, the risks and benefits of those operations, and then whatever is needed in the process of getting insurance authorization, as well as making sure that all of your medical problems are optimized so that you can have as safe as possible operation. So typically most patients will be screened for sleep apnea, uh, which may require a sleep study, which can be done sometimes at home, sometimes they're done what's called in lab, um, and these things are typically covered by insurance. Um, and the idea behind screening for sleep study and sleep apnea is that patients that are having weight loss surgery are at an increased risk of having sleep apnea, and also the surgery itself increases the risk of complications if you have sleep apnea and it hasn't been properly managed prior to surgery, which is kind of a recurring theme in weight loss surgery and minimizing complications. So if you should need a sleep study, you'll be directed that way, um, and, and this is something that's typically cleared by insurance. The other component to this story is that if you already have sleep apnea, you may need to have a repeat titration if you haven't been using a machine in a long time. Um, or if you have really bad sleep apnea or, or really bad lung issues, you may actually even need to see your lung doctor to make sure that all those things are optimized prior to surgery to minimize your risk of complications, which is really what this is all about. The other thing that's commonly needed is, is some kind of heart test. So uh, our patients are oftentimes are at increased risk for having underlying heart disease and we want to make sure that your heart's healthy enough for surgery. So many times patients undergo a stress test or some kind of heart study to evaluate the heart to make sure that it can withstand surgery because uh, the last thing we want to do is find out that you, your heart needs some kind of procedure while we're trying to do a weight loss procedure. Most, of, most often patients can have a, an exercise stress test in the office which usually it consists of pedaling on a stationary bike or walking on a treadmill while you're hooked up to some EKG leads. We stress the heart and then we can see some EKG finds, findings that might show that your heart is under stress or maybe is unhealthy, uh, in which case we would refer you on to uh, an, a, a heart doctor that might decide that you need to have more invasive heart testing. Um, and again, this is also done to minimize the risk of any complications uh, during the operation. Um, and this heart testing is also generally something that um, is also covered by insurance in, in most cases. Uh, another thing that the insurance companies often requires is a psychological evaluation. Um, and uh, that can sometimes be done over the phone, sometimes it's done in the office. And I don't like to think of it as a clearance so much as, as it is uh, more of uh, just an assessment to maybe identify any psychological issues that might um, compromise outcomes um, and maybe identify certain problem areas that can be improved on both before and after surgery just to optimize results. Most insurance policies do require psychological evaluation um, as well. Uh, the other thing that is usually required is nutritional visits, which is essentially meeting with a dietitian. Now the plans vary, uh, insurance plans vary in the number of dietitian visits that you might need. You can usually only do one dietitian visit a month and they typically need to be done consecutively uh, without missing any. Uh, the insurance companies uh, don't like it if you do two dietitian visits and then you miss the third one, sometimes they make you start all over again. So it's really important that you understand the rules and regulations of your policy and, and follow those guidelines to the letter because if you don't, a lot of times the insurance companies will, will deny those authorizations for surgery. Um, uh, the plans vary usually from as little as one dietitian visit to maybe as many as six. Um, and so these things all need to be completed before we would actually submit to your insurance company for authorization. Uh, once your uh, a surgery is approved, then you typically are started on a preoperative diet. Now the preoperative diet will be explained, at least in our practice, by our dietitians, uh, but uh, you know, practices vary. 
Uh, the role of the preoperative diet in general is to help shrink the liver down. Your, your liver stores carbohydrates, which makes it swell up, and uh, your, your liver overlies the stomach, and a large liver can make these surgeries quite difficult. So the preoperative diet is, is done to help shrink the liver down, and this also helps to get weight loss rolling. Um, so you would be started on a preoperative diet, which basically consists of protein shakes uh, and maybe like a soup and a salad with some approved snacks. Um, and again, at least in our practice, our dietitian goes over the details of the preoperative diet. Um, after that's said and ready, then it's time for surgery. Uh, and I'll uh, talk about the surgery itself and what you can expect at the hospital stay and the post-operative course on the next video. Um, I'm going to be uh, going out of town for a week, so I'll see you guys back in two weeks. God bless.